Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Dave. I work at a company here in Holland that uh, is producing software for uh, managing surveillance cameras. And the presentation today is about uh, about uh, what's going to happen with your privacy and how far is technique going currently with the surveillance uh, cameras and that area. I am an outsider. I, 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 I really know that I'm, I'm trying to drink this uh, Coke because I know the cat I know the hacker's candy, I use it myself. Well, caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> so two a day makes you keep the doctor away. <laughs> anyway, so I'm trying to blend in a little bit. So uh, to, to, to see if I'm more fit to fit in the group here. Okay, I'm going to uh, give you a presentation on video surveillance. Everybody may, might have an idea on video surveillance and how it's currently developed. It's, it's changing rapidly at this moment because a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago, everything was analog, only cocks. But I'll get back to that later. You can run, but you can't hide. And on top of there, you see the word privacy is really falling off at this moment. So, a little bit of history on CCTV to start with. In 1942, it was in Germany where the first surveillance camera was used. It was used <coughs> to uh, monitor the, the V2 rocket systems, and the system was designed by Siemens. In the 70s, uh, especially in England, uh, they started to uh, do a lot of monitoring on the streets, a lot of cameras on the street. Well, if you go to England now, really on every street corner you will find cameras. It's still there, and you're monitoring. If you walk around London, I'm good at, there's a suggestion on every hour you walk around London, there's 24 hours of video on you. So just to give you an impression. In the 70s and 80s, the cassette recorders hit the market and CCTV was commonly used in banks. And later retailers, they also found convenient, and convenience stores and gas stations followed quickly. In the 90s, there were digital video recorders. We're still talking about an analog signal, and the analog signal was plugged into digital video recorders, and all the video was recorded on hard disks. In 1996, there was the first uh, IP camera. It was found by Axis in, two, uh, in, in 96. Uh, 96. I was talking about a camera that was able to do one frame per second, and I believe 64480 uh, resolution. We'll get back to that later. In 2010, suddenly there was a big change. Video content analysis became more serious reality. Yeah, and I'll get back to you and I'll show it to you what, what's really going on at this moment. You won't believe it and you won't feel secure in stream anymore. Today, everyone, everyone has a smartphone. And when we talk to each other, we ask, oh, yeah, 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 that movie, oh, wait, YouTube, and you find a video. Video is common good. Everyone has video in the pocket. And that is also the danger. You know this movie? Echelon Conspiracy? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, let me give you a trick. <laughs> Thank you. 
Brooklyn childhood. When can we go live? Messages are coming from inside U.S. territories. All training systems are up now. So I decided I would. But I needed a partner. Someone with the skills to intervene. Hunted by the authorities. We work in secret. You will never find us. But victim or perpetrator, if your number's up, we'll find you. rectangles around the persons and, and all the other information. I will give you a demonstration on how it looks for real. Because this is just a video. And, and the, the big theme of this presentation is that security comes at a price, but is it truth or is it fiction? How far are we blend in at this moment? Like in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the introduction on the trailer of Person of Interest, the guy said, since 9-11, a lot of things changed. I'll get back to that later. Okay, now let me show you some things on the surreality, what is not real. Eh? There's a, a lot of things are possible today, but not everything. So I'm not going to show you completely. Oh. <laughs> but it's going, this video tells you, uh, oh, let's enhance this image. Oh, I see a license plate. From one pixel we can make a complete number. This is fiction. They always use the keyboard. get the idea, we let's zoom into the license plate and then they zoom into the screw on the license plate and they can see the images on the screw and they say, oh, let's zoom in a little bit more and you can see the reflection, the reflection on the screw that you can recognize the person finally. This is fiction. <coughs> well, is it fiction? Is it really fiction? Well, let's give you one good example. What you see is what you get. In 1953, there was a book, Kuifje, or uh, Tintin, and they called it Destination Moon. This book was written in 1953. You see the rockets, they're ready to go to the moon. Do you know the year where uh, Neil Armstrong really landed? 69. 69. Yeah, great, 69. So what is invented before will be a reality later. So let's go back to Kelly from CSI Miami. I really like that chick. <laughs> She zooms into a license plate from one pixel and then says, oh, let's enhance it a little bit more, <coughs> an extra filter here, there, and then you get a number. Okay. The industry responded on this. We said, okay, shit, yeah, we have only a VGA resolution at this moment for security cameras. 
yeah, you cannot zoom, zoom into that. Well, you cannot even read a license plate on it. So we have to do something about it. So there's Moore's Law. You know Moore's Law? Yeah, it's uh, designed yeah. for uh, Intel, and if I worked at Intel, and it says, uh, it's an observation of the history of computing hardware, the number of transistors on integrated circuits doubles approximately every two years or 18 months. Or something. So if I look at the security cameras and the development of the last years, you see in 1996, the first camera, I just showed you a picture of, it was 0.1 megapixels in one frame per second. In 2010, we introduced HDTV on 30 frames per second. Currently at my office, we have a full HD 60 frames per second security camera. Yeah, we, can make better, we can make better picture quality than uh, a lot of Hollywood or uh, porn industry. Uh, <coughs> okay. And we already have 3, 5, 20, and even more megapixel cameras. So uh, I believe that the border is around 28 megapixel. It's the same quality as analog. You can well, imagine, we are not putting small pictures anymore, we are dragging wallpapers through, uh, through, through the computer. So, you see a small picture there where it says, this is the smallest resolution and it's going to be larger and larger and larger. And then we go back to Kelly from uh, CSI. And then she said, oh, let me zoom into the license plate. Oh, no problem anymore. This can be done for real. Oh, let's zoom into the screw. Oh, yeah, that's, that can happen as well. I've, I've been to a security show in, in, in England last year and they demonstrated a 20 megapixel camera to me. And it was pointed on a building in New York. And you could see the whole streets and a lot of windows and they zoomed into the one window and you can really see the, 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 the paintings inside the building hanging on the wall. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> you wanna put some foil on your windows. <laughs> okay, what are we doing with the license plate information? Well, Jan and I were just talking about it while we were parking a car. He said, why do we have to put a license plate number in that computer? Why? I said, because the guys who are checking you for the parking, they are uh, too lazy to get out of the car. They have a camera inside the car, and the camera spots the vehicles, and is checking it live on the database of the people who pay for the car. And the police are doing the same. And you know, they push a button, they don't have to get out of the car and you will have your ticket at home before you leave here. It's actually even worse. Uh, for Utrecht, you had to, to, it was a must to put your license plate information in. And they were already checking if you had paid your car tax, uh, if you were driving around uninsured, etc. Absolutely. Well, I, I was, uh, last thing I was going to Belgium. And I noticed that I, when I, when I uh, uh, crossed the border, there are, are some cameras up there. And I was thinking, what, what is these? are not normal cameras. These are actually these cameras. And in the background, no, you don't see it very good, but in the background you can see uh, a border crossing uh, where you can see how it looks like. Well, it's something like this. Maybe you have seen this. Every time when you see these cameras, they take your license plates. They save it in a database, they check you for your uh, taxes, they check you for your criminal records, and they don't say they do it. But I cross the border to Belgium, I come back in the evening. So they have a record of me leaving Holland, and they have a record of me coming back from Holland. Well, I didn't bring fireworks this time. <laughs> and the other cameras below, they are often used for uh, uh, tracking, uh, counting the amount of traffic, uh, traffic in streets and, and so on but uh, also used to track you for speeding, for example. Are these standard cameras, uh, Dave? Or are these standard cameras, or do they have a higher no. frame rate? Or no. Those are uh, often uh, infrared cameras, so they are very uh, sensitive for infrared, as you can see here. It's, it's, it's grayscale, usually. And uh, a lot of... Um, well, it, it, these are actually the ones used by the police inside cars. You can see the infrared LEDs. Uh, this is a normal camera, but you see three different images on three, three different frequencies, and then uh, there will be automatic recognition. So they use a camera, but you, yeah, we don't use the picture for looking what kind of car it is. There are two different techniques used. Um, OCR techniques, 
uh, and, and there's a newer technique going on, the same technique that is used by the mail uh, for handwrite checking, and they use this for uh, license plate recognition. And actually at this moment, we can do uh, 95 plus accuracy on, on, the, on the license plate. The license plate cameras also are able to, kept to, to uh, measure the speed that you're driving. So, but because it's a 95% accuracy, so <coughs> they are not yet allowed to send you a ticket for your speed. But believe me, maybe in two years they will. The speed, the speed, the uh, the measure, um, the license plate is can go up to 220 kilometers an hour they catch your license plate. If you see the tracking systems, the, the, the long distance tracking systems, there's one trick that you can uh, avoid. It. You have to drive over 180 kilometers behind a truck for one meter. Hey, why is your fuck? <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, why is only 95% accuracy? Because you have like 60 frames, so you can just pick another one. But this, these cameras are not used on 60 frames. Okay. But uh, I'm sure in a few years they will. They can measure the distance between you and your and the car in front of you. So if you are uh, plucker, what is it? The tailing, then you can get your ticket as well. In a few years. Okay, remember the video from uh, uh, from a person of interest? Okay, this is the real video content analysis. This is information that can be provided by, uh, by, by, by uh, calculating systems, by intelligence video content analysis systems. So, let me show you a video. Hey. Kind of looks like what we, see, what we saw on the person of interest uh, movie. Of course, this is all based on motion detection and directive motion detection, but the systems go further. They can see if it is a person, is it a car, is it an animal, is it a suitcase, is it a car, what color it is. There's a lot, a lot of uh, parameters that you can put in there. And in this movie, it's, it's actually this is very simple analytics. This is a cross line analytics. Okay, when I cross this line, then I can uh, define a response. Okay, let's see another form of analytics. It's also a kind of cross line uh, detection, but it's more enhanced. Here we go. I'm a sales guy, and I guess this guy also is a sales guy, and he never went to the military. Because he's wearing his leather shoes and he drops him, and now he's. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you can, you can define an whole area which you can say, okay, when he's here it's okay, when he's there it's not okay, and there's a lot of uh, parameters that you can give. Like, for example, uh, if people are grouping together, you can say, okay, it's not allowed to group together. Uh, or it's allowed to group together only on this area, but not on the other area. So uh, let's not speak about young people. You know, when old people, uh, 60, 70 plus, they all go, come together with <coughs> the car. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and especially when they do that in supermarkets, you want them to get the hell out. But in this case, we can put some analytics on there, and if there are some older people grouping together, we can keep their butts. <laughs> Here's another... Uh, Kind of analytics, uh, for example, um, the, the directional. Uh, if somebody is ghost riding uh, some way, or he is parking in an area where he's not allowed to park, then you don't have to send out a, a guy to check it again for if there's somebody who needs to park. No, you will get an event from your computer, and you can make a picture of the license plate and we'll send it a nice picture. Thank you. Um, this is a little bit more advanced. You see cars, you see person, people. Uh, there's a, a lot of stuff going on in here. And there's a <coughs> directive analytics, so there's a lot of uh, things that can be done on uh, a simple place. place. For example, traffic management. And this one is more, more dangerous. I'm going to get in, in there now. Because what you see here is heat mapping. 
So security cameras are no longer only used for security. They're used for marketing purposes. OK. Let's make a heat map of a supermarket. And I see a lot of heat around the, 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 the milk. And well, a lot of people buy milk. So I have to, when I, when I want to sell more stuff, I have to make something around that area where the stuff that I want to sell. And all marketing uh, strategies are based on, on Heat map like this. Okay. Something else. Thermal energy. Okay. Um, did you see the new show on TV? In the police helicopter? In the nice video uh, streams? Well, if you look at the, this camera here, you can see my mouse there, right? Yeah. This is called a flare thermal camera. The price of this camera is 750,000 euros. How much? 750,000 euros. Oh. And there's a cooling system with stickstoff. I don't know the English word. Right. Okay. And below there you see the, an American spy airplane. And you see the American spy airplane has the exact same camera. And it's being used for thermal imaging. What is thermal imaging? Thermal imaging is, is, is a, a different way of, of, of filming people. It's not, I cannot recognize who it is, but I can recognize that somebody is climbing my fence. Well, by the way, these cameras for security purposes are also quite expensive. It starts with 2,000 euros. So, let's show a video. There's my mouse. <coughs> She is writing some heat signatures. My smart board. Yeah. <laughs> you can see uh, uh, smoke, yeah, no problem. There's a guy in the woods, but you won't see him, but you can see him with a thermal camera. <coughs> First it was designed for military purposes, but now it's going to be used more and more in security. Actually, there is a, a house in Laren, and for a, for a very, very rich guy, and he has 18 cameras of these type, type in his garden. <laughs> I can, I think you can imagine the, the use of this, right? It's a, it's a very, yeah, very high detection rate. And if you use thermal imaging in combination with video content analysis, <coughs> then you have a very trustworthy system if you choose the right analysis. Is it the main reason why they use terminal uh, images because bodies have a heat temperature and they're easily to detect? Well, if, if, if you look at this comparison, this is night vision. Yeah. And the night vision, what they do is they enhance the, uh, the, 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 the light that is already available. Mm -hmm. And heat signature is, 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 is a, a, total different way of capturing uh, an image. So they, they take the heat signature. They, uh, there's a, uh, a lot of detail that you can see. And, and every object, even sure. this coke, is, is giving a heat signature. This is a big difference, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's still electromagnetic spectrum, so. Absolutely. You can fool it with YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, sent to some uh, bags when you wear this, yeah. yeah, like a ghillie suit they call it in the army. They, the guys wear ghillie suits for a reason, <laughs> just not to get a stretch. <coughs> well, actually, I, I had one of these cameras in my house a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, I have a laminate floor, and it's very shiny. Floor. And I had a small picture of, I was filming my cats with it. They were, I have two young cats, they were washing each other. I'm going to show you the, the clear image of that as well. So, okay, uh, if you want to see this, I'll give you the presentation later. So, it's used for detection, often in combination with regular cameras, because you cannot recognize a person who it is, but you can detect it. Um, often used in, in combination with video content analysis and cameras can measure temperature, the exact temperature of every pixel. And in the military they already use megapixel quality for this, 
but in security it's not allowed. It's 320 to 40 maximum. And if you want to uh, have more, and it's going to be released soon that we are allowed to have VGA quality, 640, we can do more and we can provide more reliable analytics and so on. So let me show you the video of my two cats. And you can see the reflective floor here. Yeah? Everything is having a hate signature. Uh, this, this, this was a, a boomer on Facebook, right? <laughs> Actually, my brother responded. He said the image is not so clear. <laughs> I just said yes, I know. That camera. That camera would be 2,000 here. Okay. Another uh, interesting uh, thing. We are monitored by traffic cameras every day. And all these cameras, um, they have different opportunities. There, there's a, on the A to A12, I guess it was, there's a test area for, uh, for yeah, traffic. Uh, between you, Krasnogorda. Uh, yeah. yeah, my, my radar detector really goes wild when I'm driving there. <laughs> it's going crazy. But you, as, as, if, if you look at the image here, actually this is a normal camera, but it can be a license plate camera. Well, what the heck is this? What is this? <laughs> Cameras are used as sensors. And what are they sensing? Not my license plate? Or what else? My speed? My distance? <coughs> if I paid my tax? So, and uh, infrared lighting here? So, next time when you drive by, try to see if you can recognize something. Here you see the, the area where they traffic, uh, do the traffic monitoring in Holland, the, the security information teams. And of course, all the cameras they use in traffic are already placed in maps. It's called geographical information system. So, uh, like they see, like you see in the movies, they say, "Oh, he's driving on this street." Click. They click on the map, and the video stream opens, and they can see you driving by. It's just as simple as that. It's true. It's really happening. So, don't hack my customers, please. Hack them. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's go back. I said here, click to see. You're going to like this. Okay. This is a live stream at this moment. <laughs> oh. I drove by there yesterday. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Hey, it's your car! <laughs> <laughs> well, my my car. <laughs> <It's your> <laughs> the fun thing about these pages is, and that's, I think you really like that, this is how we do it. Uh, look for the source, and <coughs> scroll down, and scroll down. Hey, this is the camera, I take the... Ah, oh. <laughs> I take the IP address. It's a direct feed, isn't it? Sorry? It's a direct uh, camera. The direct camera, let's see what happens. Uh, 82, 95... Uh, you've already been there. <laughs> I, I, tried the, I tried the password. This is the, this is the camera, like when I have this, this is the camera asking me for login. And usually this root and pass, but not this. Oh, damn. Oh, but you can try root root and admin admin and Ninety percent of the time, so one to three score. Yeah, yeah you, you, I think it's your business, not mine. But uh, why, why are they putting it directly on the internet? Because if a lot of people are looking on these images, then the camera could. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We could toss those cameras. Yeah, exactly. I wish you good luck. Please send me more information if you have uh, the password. I can use the images in my presentation. <laughs> so anyway, <coughs> what we see here, cameras are a lot of used in traffic, and of course for good purpose, but they can be used for a bad purpose as well. This actually is the Rotterdam Rhinemont Police Control Room. I've been there many times. You cannot get in there if you're not screened, and on every monitor there are some public cameras available. And actually, the people sitting in front are not police officers. There's only one police officer sitting behind them, and he is officially in control. And I can give you a lot of examples, like when, when, uh, somebody is trying to steal a bike somewhere, and they zoom in the camera, and he's trying to steal a bike. Oh, actually, I know one example of a guy, he was throwing a stolen bike in the water. And uh, it was really like this. Uh, Hey, uh, what are you doing? You're under arrest. Come on, come with us. How do you know that? 
really like this. Okay, uh, you see a lot of these cameras uh, on the streets, and uh, they are often often monitored by uh, public surveillance, not by the police. Okay, mobile cameras. So, mobile cameras. What do I have to think about mobile cameras? What you see here is actually one of the gadgets I brought with me. <coughs> this is called a PMRS. It's a, I don't know. It's a uh, multimedia streaming uh, system. This unit has a SIM card in there. It has a camera. It can be turned on like this, and the police is able to see and record everything. But it has GPS in there. It has, it has uh, of course, a video camera, huh? and you can send out uh, the video, and you can send out the GPS coordinates to an alarm control room, and they can monitor everything the guy does. And of course, I have a video with me. This is the video that we cannot publicly uh, show. We cut it out. So, this is actually uh, a recording. And, uh, and you can see the quality. This is live streaming quality. Oh, over 3G? Over 3G. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. How, so, not bad. How many data does it use? <laughs> Um, well, in my car, I'm using about <coughs> 320 kilobits a second per camera. That's quite good. But depending on the quality that you want. If you want to have HD, you're going over a megabit. But it's used for proof, but it's also, it also has a button. If it's pressed, then <coughs> you need help. Yeah? So if you want to have a look at these things, uh, you can have it later. Of course, uh, this video takes quite long, so I quit it here. So, also, police cars are equipped with cameras nowadays. More and more it's going to happen. They all are pilot projects. Toys for boys. So, you see some examples here of police cars that are equipped with cameras. And I, I really like this camera here. This is, uh, we call him Metal Mickey. The camera is made by Bosch. And it's an analog camera, but it has a great quality uh, image. But if we have to equip every police car with this camera, it's going to cost, especially in this time, it's not affordable. I believe this camera is 10,000 euros. So, if we have a cheaper version, we can have a look at this camera. I think it's maybe a 500 euro camera. It is the one that can look in 360 degrees direction. So yes, it can okay. be done. Actually, my car is behind there. It's equipped with some cameras. And I'm going to show you a video of how that... So we have to leave the other way. We <laughs> <laughs> have to leave the other way. Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> so, also, ambulances more and more are equipped with cameras. Outside, not the inside, because they don't want to record their mistakes. They mm -hmm. want to record the people that attack the ambulance. And as you can see, this ambulance is equipped with one, two, three, and I guess the other side, four or five cameras outside. The back side. Of course, everything. Maybe back side as well. Six. Yeah. Six cameras. Well, my car has only three. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is the movie. This is the movie of my car. You know the series Night Rider? I <laughs> <laughs> used to be a big fan of Night Rider. Uh, you still are. You still are. Still are. <laughs> <laughs> That's the company I work for. <laughs> <laughs> This is the quality that is received over 3G 
in an alarm control. Actually, this was last year. Now the quality is a lot better. Found 
uh, there's, a, there's a forum, as you can see, on an open, an open industry forum <coughs> for the development of global standard for the interface of IP-based physical security products. Yes, ONVIF is danger. ONVIF is an open communication standard, but not only for cameras. Currently, they already produced over 2,000 different products that are ONVIF compatible. So that means that everyone, everyone that knows the ONVIF language can talk to an ONVIF camera. For example, VLC media player. You can use VLC. Oh shit, did I <laughs> You can use VLC to communicate to a camera. Why? Because the ONVIF protocol is made out of RTSP streaming protocol and SOAP interfacing. So we did not hear that from you. <laughs> um, do we have to be worry, be worried about these standards? Well, I, I'm kind, kind of worried because what, what is needed for someone to say, okay, now we're taking over these cameras and we're taking over these cameras, it's, it's made simple. The company I worked for a few years ago, we were very special because we were interfacing with over 50 different brands. But that's not special anymore today because we have only and we can communicate with any brand you want. 20 years ago, uh, you, you had a camera system made by Bosch or by Siemens or by Honeywell, and you could never combine those things together. And now we have one. <coughs> so, but there are more protocols for security alarm systems. We have the SIA protocol, and I'm very interested in the next, uh, in the next uh, model. And, uh, <laughs> Because we use the SEER protocol in our software. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. But there also is an um, OPC protocol for uh, communication with the uh, contacts and auxiliaries. So all these universal protocols link everything together. And everyone wants to do IP today. So you know, are we going too far? Are we going too far? Well. <coughs> We have Google. I think Google is the largest privacy violating company in the world. But they also made some nice gadgets that we all want to have. The Google glasses. Do you want to have the Google glasses? I don't want to have. I want to have them. Yeah. But look what they do. They make a combination of <coughs> video, uh, data, uh, global, uh, geographical information systems. They do everything that we, we scare of. So, but we all want to have it. <laughs> Look at this helicopter here. Actually, I'm going to show you the next helicopter. This is a drone made by a company in the Nordics. And it's being used by the Benelux governments to watch you. This actually, as you can see here, can hold FLIR cameras. And it can also hold directional microphones. And it can fly over 100 meters on top of you. You won't see it, you won't hear it, but they will listen in. They are listening, they see you walking around, and they hear you talking. And what's the color? Well, this one is black, but the ones used are gray. When you look up, you will not notice it, you will not hear it, you will not see it but it's already in use. But you did not get that from me, because that's a partner of mine working in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the other spy airplane I, sh I showed you in the, in the previous um, I, I, I looked up some information on that airplane from, uh, an, uh, from the Congressional Research Service about that uh, airplane. It can fly over what it says, electrical, electro-optical sensors, cameras, can identify an object of the size of a milk carton from an altitude of 60,000 feet. 18 kilometers. 18, that's twice as high as a, as a, as a, as a commercial aircraft. You mm -hmm. won't hear it, you won't see it, it will spot you and bomb you. <laughs> One of my latest slides is, uh, are we going too far? Privacy first and security. Look what's already possible. I just showed you some real-time examples. Yeah, every cell phone has a camera, has a GPS, and 
non-removable batteries and are said to be uh, able to be turned on remote. Yeah, you can turn on the microphone, you can turn on the camera, we can... Huh? So, cars get equipped with tracking systems. My boss, he has an Audi A7, very nice car. It has a plus 5 alarm system in there, including um, a tracking system. And if somebody steals his car or he is kidnapping, then remotely they can turn off his car. You don't have to be afraid, of course, because it's all in our use. Cameras are being used as sensors for video, audio, and our behavior. Do we let them control our behavior? No, we put them together, we take this GPS coordinates, and we put them on a geographical information system, and you will, they can always see where you are. Auxiliaries and contacts are also connected to the network, so we are, at this moment, our social networks is also very nice. Yeah. Our social networks are able to use IP and GPS info, streaming video, and our keyboard monitor. I've been there. I've been there in this alarm in this alarm control room, and I've seen two police officers spotting Twitter all day. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't use Twitter. <laughs> the technology exists. The infrastructure already exists. Who's smart enough to connect everything together, or is it already connected? Up to you guys what you want to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, right? One last thing, please don't detect my customers. <laughs> I'll come back for you and I have another hobby, but young he will tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let me. Well, we have one question. We have one question. Yeah. Uh, what happens if somebody, somebody uses a 3G jammer? Um, uh, I, think, police I think the police the officer will lose signal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. a real problem? Uh, for now, but <coughs> maybe later. I, I, I'm not. I'm the, 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 the main worry worries about uh, from the police at this moment is the, the loose of bandwidth. They, of course, they have special cells on the, on the cell phone towers where they have. Uh, they have yeah, but. Not always. For example, in uh, big events, they take these cameras with them, but a lot of people are already calling. Imagine, uh, imagine a bombing on Amsterdam Central, and the police is going there, and everybody is calling, oh, 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 and they will not have signal on their phones. But they're working on it right now to <coughs> find a solution on that. Is that also why uh, the this bombing now or? Uh, is talking about uh, giving the, the free frequencies which are uh, not used yet. Uh, they want to take it into public and create more bandwidth for all activated users. Uh, is it also one of the reasons why they? I'm not want sure. To I, guess, I guess. So. I know they have private uh, frequencies already with their yeah, right. full backup network. Actually, the highest frequencies are reserved for the military. I've been in the military IT for a few years with them. Of and a half years, and they reserve the gigahertz pounds for the for the military, and can also be used in this country. One, 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 one. <laughs> okay. By the way, if, if in, in break time you can have a look at the system, I brought some cameras here. Uh, this this is my demo kit when I visit a customer, and there's some stuff here connected. I have a few cameras connected there. Uh, we can work with maps, we can work with motion detection, as you can see. Uh, there is this um, temperature, airflow, humidity, uh, sensors connected to it. So, as you can see, context, auxiliaries, everything is connected. So, we can play around with it. Okay, thank you. Hey, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, for all the speakers, we have a small present. I just realized uh, the fact that you actually prefer a bottle of Coke <laughs> instead of a bottle of this, uh, but I still hope you will enjoy it. Is that alcohol in it? Yes. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay.